Hello and welcome to the video notes for Lesson 7-6, Similarity Transformations. And so we're going to talk about similarity transformations in this lesson. Um, most importantly, those are transformations that leave you with similar figures to the original figures. So, in the past we've identified congruence transformations. Whenever we transform an object we get a resulting image that is congruent to the original figure. Well now we're going to identify similarity transformations. Transformations that give you a resulting image that is similar to the original figure but not congruent. And we'll also verify similarity after a similarity transformation. So, let's get started right away. Our similarity transformation we're going to focus on here is called a dilation. It's a transformation that either enlarges or reduces a figure proportionally. And that's why it's a similarity transformation, a transformation that produces a similar figure. So in a dilation, either an enlargement or a reduction of your figure into the new image, those figures will be similar. The center of dilation is that center point from which that dilation is performed. So you can either start with a point and around and expand around it or shrink around it or start with a point outside it and expand in one direction or um, shrink towards that point for your center of dilation. The scale factor of a dilation is the extent of the dilation. In other words, it's the ratio of the length on the image, which the image is the new figure if you remember your terminology from when we talked about transformations, the image is the result to a corresponding length on the pre-image or the original figure. Okay, So in a dilation it can either be an enlargement or a reduction. So the first thing we're going to be doing is figuring out whether the dilation is an enlargement or reduction. And so for our purposes today we're going to consider the original figure in this example as FGH all right, and then we go to or make a dilation creating RST, which is bigger than the original, so it's an enlargement. Now the scale factor is going to be greater than one. Anytime a scale factor is greater than one, we know it's an enlargement. We can tell it's a scale factor greater than one. In this example, it, this pre-image or the original figure gives us a, an, an image that is three times the original, so it's a scale factor of three, or three to one. Since that is greater than one, we say it's an enlargement. Now if I started with this trapezoid, what appears to be a trapezoid, A, B, C, D, but then I went back down to trapezoid W, X, Y, Z, that's a reduction. Oops, sorry about that. That's a reduction. The scale factor is one-fourth. This new image is one-fourth the size of the original. Okay, and so our scale factor is between zero and one. You'll notice we never ever have a scale factor that is a negative number. So we can't have a scale factor less than zero. That's why they put this in there as opposed to just saying k less than one. You'll notice our k variable represents that scale factor. So here scale factor appears to be three. That's greater than one. Here scale factor appears to be one-fourth. So that's less than one. So let's put that into practice. Let's take a look at these two examples and identify whether it is an enlargement or a reduction and then find the scale factor for the dilation. Okay, and in these two examples we're going to start with figure A. That's our original and then we're going to go to figure B. Okay, so figure A is this triangle. and then that changes into figure B. Since our original figure A is bigger than our our image B, we can say that this is an, a reduction. Okay, it's a reduction. Now we need to find the scale factor. And so let's look at the original dimensions and in it we can just compare these side lengths. These are both right triangles so we can Let's just take a look at the vertical side of A, 1, 2, 3, 4, to the vertical side of B, which is only 2. So that ratio would actually be written 
as 2 over 4. It's the image length to its corresponding pre-image length, which is 1 half. This is a reduction of 1 half. Okay, you always start with the new figure's dimensions over the old figure's dimensions. So on part B, we start with A again, which in this case, A is the smaller rectangle. And then figure B is the larger rectangle. So this is an enlargement. And let's find that scale factor. Okay, our scale factor takes the new dimensions. Let's use the vertical side here, one, two, three, to its corresponding original dimension, one. So that's a three to one, or we can just say the scale factor is three. All right, that leads us to example two. And it's a real life example using our, our concept of photocopying. A photocopy of a receipt is 1.5 inches wide and four inches long. Okay, that's actually the receipt. Okay, so the receipt is 1.5 inches wide and four inches long, that's our original. By what percent should we uh, enlarge the receipt so that its image is two times the original? Okay, now you could draw a picture Okay, we can make a little 1 by 5, 1.5 by 4, and then we want to make that twice the original. Okay, well it's easy to come up with, well that should be 3, and that should be 8. Alright, we can get our new dimensions, but we want to express the percentage of a scale factor of 2. So we're going to take that scale factor of 2, and multiply it by 100%, and we get it's a 200% enlargement. And the new dimensions are 3 by 8 inches. All right, and this leads us to our last uh, set of examples. In these examples, I want you to read this note first. You can verify that a dilation produces a similar figure by comparing corresponding sides and angles, or if we're specifically talking about triangles, you can also use angle-angle similarity, side-side-side similarity, or side-angle-side similarity. All right, and these only apply to triangles. Now, the point of what we're doing in this example is we're going to perform the dilation, we're going to show the original figure graphed on our coordinate plane, then we're going to show its image after the dilation graphed on the coordinate plane. And in order for it to be a true dilation, to verify that it is a dilation, we have to have similar figures. So we're going to test for similarity using these facts or using corresponding sides and angles if it's not a triangle. So let's take a look at the original on part A. M is at negative 6, negative 3, N is at 6, negative 3, and O is at negative 6, 6. Okay, so there's our first triangle. Okay, when we graph it, we get triangle MNO, and that is a right triangle because MN is horizontal, MO is vertical, so we can say that's a right triangle. And then when we plot our image coordinates of D, negative 2, negative 1, F, 2, negative 1, and G, negative 2, 2, and we plot those coordinates and graph it, it looks like this. And so for this to be a true dilation, a reduction by dilation, we need to be able to show that these are similar. Well, they are triangles, so we can use one of these three. Now. The easiest thing to do is to recognize that these are both right angles, and since they're both right angles, all right angles are congruent. So I can go ahead and say angle M is congruent to angle D. So there's a pair of angles. 
And then since they're made up of horizontal and vertical sides, I can easily count their lengths without having to use the full distance formula. Mn goes from negative 6 to positive 6. Mn is 12. And then Mo goes from negative 3 up to positive 6, so that's 9. And then I can do the same thing for df and dg. df, just counting those, has a length of 4, and dg is a length of 3. So if I check those ratios, mn to its corresponding side, df, that gives me a 12 to 4, or 3 to 1 ratio. And then if I check mo to its corresponding side, dg, that gives me 9 to 3, which is again 3 to 1. So I've shown that these two sides are proportional to their corresponding sides, and the included angles are congruent, so triangle MNO is similar to triangle DFG by side angle side, sorry, I forgot to have, how to write an S for a second, side angle side similarity. And so those are the things you have to show. All right, so let's try that again on part B. I'm going to have you guys plot the points for GHIJ, and that should be a quadrilateral of some kind, and then QRST is another quadrilateral. The original are these four, and then the new image are these four on the bottom. Go ahead and plot those points and connect them to draw your quadrilaterals. All right, this is what we should get. All right, you'll notice that our original figure is a rectangle, GHJI, and our image then, after the dilation, is QRTS, that's also a rectangle, S and J share the same coordinates, and so it appears that it is a dilation, it appears it's, appears it's an enlargement, and we want to check that these are similar figures. And we don't have to worry about that we don't have one inside the other or not, the center of dilation is still the origin, we are taking it from this point and enlarging it to the right, but we do want to check for similarity. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to check the corresponding sides and angles because it's not a triangle, so I can't use my shortcuts. We're going to check all the corresponding sides. Now, first I want to check all the angles. Since these are both made of horizontal and vertical lines, all of these angles are right angles. And so all right angles are congruent. So I can say that all angles are congruent. That takes care of all the corresponding angles. And then I want to check the proportionality of their side lengths. Now, GI is 1, its corresponding side. QS is 2. Same thing for RT and HJ. Okay, so our scale factor We go from, for scale factor, we always want to go from our image back to the original. That's 2 to 1. So GI over QS is going to be the same as HJ over RT and that's 2 to 1, and then these horizontal segments are 4 and 2, so those are all the same, and so all side lengths are proportional. So I've shown all corresponding angles are congruent, all corresponding side lengths are proportional with that ratio of 2 to 1, or 1 to 2 if we wrote it backwards. For these purposes, that's okay. So I can say that GHJI is similar to QRTS by definition of similarity. And those are the things we need to say for that. All right? And that's how we verify the similarity of the transformation. Okay, just a couple things for you to remember before this video is done and this is when working with coordinate planes, remember that horizontal lines are always parallel, so they have the same slope, so parallel lines again are going to help you out, same thing for vertical lines, 
Horizontal lines are perpendicular to vertical lines. They form right angles, so we have congruent right angles there. Uh, if parallel lines are cut by a transversal, remember corresponding angles are going to be congruent. Okay, I'll give you a little picture to see how that looks.